Salam guys, so I saw this video about a Tesla analyst who is bearish on the stock and he was providing arguments that I found to be the embodiment of some of the biases and cognitive errors that I've been talking to you about that I try to avoid myself and I advise others who are making investment decisions to absolutely avoid at all costs. And specifically, I'm talking about confirmation bias, and that is the tendency that humans have to only process information and only appreciate information that confirms their previously held beliefs and their tendency to ignore and not give credit to information that may challenge their beliefs because of the discomfort that this information that challenges their belief causes them. So without further ado, let's watch this video and I'm going to provide my commentary on what this analyst is saying and we'll see whether or not his arguments are valid. Tesla stock is one of the most polarizing on the street. On one side, we have the bulls who are all in CEO Elon Musk's clean energy vision. But on the other, there's a legion of short sellers who believe financial reality will eventually catch up with the company. Um, Gordon, I'm going to start with you. Your strongest case. Right. So Elon Musk in February of 2019 said that Tesla was going to deliver 420 to 600,000 cars. The number came in at 367.5. To me, this argument makes no sense whatsoever because he's basically knocking Tesla for having a CEO that aggressively forecasted the number of cars that they were going to deliver in the beginning of 2019. And 2019 is now done and they actually didn't meet that aggressive goal that they had set for themselves. Well, to me, what matters is what did they actually do in 2019? And what they did, as this person mentioned, is that they delivered 367,500 cars. That means their sales were up 50% in 2019 compared to 2018. That means that in 2019, they delivered as much as they delivered in 2018 and in 2017 combined. So that's very impressive. That is a good trend. It doesn't matter if the CEO has really aggressive goals. That's actually a positive because aggressive goals tend to push people to innovate, to push the limits of what it is that they can do. If you had a CEO that was always putting goals that the company was easily meeting, then maybe they're not putting aggressive enough goals. They're not pushing themselves enough. So this could actually be a positive that you have a CEO that's very aggressive in terms of the timelines and goals that he puts for the company. I mean, basically, by his logic, if Elon had promised 367,500 deliveries in 2019, then he would be okay with the stock. Even though in both cases, whether he promised or didn't promise, they would have delivered the same number of cars. To me, that makes no sense whatsoever. If you look at Europe as, uh, over the first 29 days of 1Q20 versus the first 29 days of uh, 4Q19, sales in Norway, Netherlands, Spain are down 40%. So it's important to understand that the automotive industry is cyclical. So when you're making comparisons, you should compare Q1 of one year with Q1 of another year rather than Q1 with Q4. Second, He's comparing 29 days in Q1 with 29 days in Q4 in three particular countries. This is not a sufficient sample size to come out with any sort of conclusion about trends that Tesla is facing. This is really an example of cherry picking data to desperately try to find any piece of information that may confirm your previously held beliefs. U.S. sales last year, total Tesla cars sold fell 3%. Model, four, or Model 3 cars in the fourth quarter fell 32% year over year. So as a Tesla analyst, this person must know that his comparison was not fair. And the reason why it wasn't fair is because in 2018, there was a federal tax credit 
that expired in Q4 of 2018. And that's why there was a spike in sales in Q3 and Q4 of 2018 because there was this federal tax credit that was going to expire in the US. And so he's comparing Q4 of 2019 that didn't have that federal tax credit with Q4 of 2018 that did have that tax credit. And he's saying, oh, well, the numbers are different. The numbers are down. Well, the context is different. And the fact that in 2019, Tesla sales were roughly the same as they were in 2018 is a win for Tesla because even without the federal tax credit, it still sold the same number of cars. That's pretty impressive. And you have a uh, pandemic breakout in China, the likes of which we've never seen, which is going to significantly hit their ability, significantly dent their ability to sell cars um, uh, in China. The The pandemic in China is a short term event. It's not something that a fundamentals investor, someone who has a long term perspective would change their thesis based on. At the end of the day, China is going to remain the largest EV market in the world and tesla for the foreseeable future at least is the best ev car manufacturer in the world and by the way it's the only ev car manufacturer with a wholly owned plant in china so these are the fundamentals the coronavirus is a short-term event that would matter if you're a short-term investor but it shouldn't matter in the long run and then lastly, back to Europe, they're building a car a factory to make 500,000 cars, and they only have 8,000 cars in transit on boats to basically Europe, China, and South Korea. The same number over the same amount of days last quarter was 23,000, 63% fall. So now we're counting the number of cars on boats at a particular point in time that are going to particular countries. This is not a metric that someone who invests based on fundamentals really cares about. You're cherry picking data, you're trying to find any shred of data that can support your thesis that Tesla is way overvalued. Numbers of cars on boats at a particular time is not a good argument. Focus on the big picture. Big picture, as I mentioned, 2019 sales were up 50%. Stop wasting your time counting cars on boats. Um, Over the past 10 years, every single year, they've lost money on the net income line. Over those 10 years, they have a cumulative loss of over $6 billion, despite, despite billions of dollars in taxpayer incentives. So to me, this argument is basically the equivalent of saying, well, we have this baby, and since he was born, he has done nothing but pee and poop and cry, And he hasn't taken a single solitary step on its own until now. And it's been a year. Well, listen, this is the natural progression of things, right? You have a company in Tesla that is trying something that has never been done before, which is to manufacture at a large scale electric vehicles. And oh, by the way, add autonomous driving capabilities to those vehicles. Of course, it's going to require a large upfront capital investment. Of course, Tesla is not going to be profitable in the first quarter or the first years of business. This is to be expected. This is the natural progression of capital intensive companies. What you can't say is that what Tesla was able to accomplish with the investments that it has used is not amazing. It has basically caused all car companies on earth to be convinced that they can no longer manufacture or rely on manufacturing internal combustion engine cars. They all are moving towards electric vehicles. I saw another statistic that basically said that Tesla today manufactures cars a thousand times faster than it did around 10 years ago. That's pretty impressive. And for the last two quarters, Tesla has been profitable and it looks like moving forward, it will continue to be profitable and it can finance its new innovation and its new investments by itself. That's a really good result 
for the investments that it has made so far. So trying to knock a company that's in a capital intensive industry because it wasn't profitable in the first years is not a good argument at all. But Stocks get this dislocated from reality, but which when, Tesla is right now. It, it reminds it, me of the tulip, the tulip boom, where people were paying hundreds, thousands of dollars for tulips, uh, risk uh, adjusted for currency back in the 1600s. You have these 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 bubbles in the market, okay. and that's what this is. Well, let me tell you, if anyone wants to trade their Tesla for a pile of tulips, I'm their guy. At any point in time, I will be willing to trade you a pile of tulips for a Tesla. If this analyst is comparing the usefulness of tulips with the usefulness of a Tesla, then I think we're a lot further apart than I originally thought. I think they have a big demand problem. I think numbers tonight are okay, but I think you're going to have a lot of one-time items like you know FSD revenue recognition, mm -hmm. uh, credit sales, etc. And I think they have a disaster of a, of a year in 2020 ahead of them. And I think you're going to hear some of that tonight when they talk about 1Q. So what I want you guys to get from this video is a reminder to always aggressively interrogate whatever beliefs or positions you may have regarding a particular investment. Don't fall in love with your thesis. Don't be blind to new information just because it doesn't support your thesis. At the end of the day, as an investor, you have to ask yourself, am I investing to be right or am I investing to make money? If you're investing to make money, then you should always have the flexibility to process new information, even if that new information is not conforming with your originally held beliefs. If you found anything in this video beneficial, then leave a like, subscribe for more content. If you need halal funding and you live in the United States, go to fundmebff.com. If you're looking for a halal investment and you earn more than $200,000 annually, Go to fundmebff.com and apply to become an investor. Until next time, take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all.